We all live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust and to be trusted. We all despise control and desire freedom. We, we are all, all united. united. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Internet Governance Forum 2021. I think this is the first session of the day, one of the first sessions of the day. And here we are about to talk about the digital divide in Poland. And um, my name is Ignacy Święcicki. I'm head of digital economy team at the Polish Economic Institute. And I will have the pleasure to moderate the panel with my distinguished uh, guests. Maria Tunianowska, board member of Kindrill Polska. Hello. Uh, Konrad Cieszokiewicz, president of Orange Foundation. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, Alek Tarkowski, president of Open Future, a think tank. Hello. And Jolanta Jaworska, government and regulatory affairs director at IBM Polska. Hello. Dzień dobry. Hello. So, uh, good to see you all here. Um, I, uh, as I said, we want to discuss the digital divide and how to combat digital divide in Poland. Uh, this has been an issue that for a number of, uh, that recently was less of a topic in the public discussions, but the pandemic has changed it all and now it has re resurfaced as a, as a problem in Poland. We in, in, the, in the Polish Economic Institute, we have published a report that shows uh, the gaps in um, broadband infrastructure in Poland. And we, uh, we in our diagnosis, there are over, over 15, 15 million people who live in areas which are uh, at risk of digital exclusion due to lack uh, due, due to a low quality of broadband internet access. Um, but uh, so, so now with the pandemic, the, the issue of digital exclusion is, is again one of the main challenges um, for Poland. Uh, having said that, I would like to ask my, uh, my guests to say what, what are their priorities? So what, what do they see as the main challenge in this, in this area? And I would like, like to start with, uh, with Konrad Szokiewicz from the Orange Foundation. Uh, who has recently uh, published a report that shows the interconnection of digital exclusion and social exclusion. Uh, Konrad, if you could please uh, start and elaborate a bit on what do you see as a main challenge in terms of digital divide in Poland? So very briefly, thank you very much once again. Uh, I would like to express my profound gratitude for inviting me here to the session and to have an opportunity to be and to discuss such a crucial issue. So uh, yes, uh, as you said, we have published these reports concerning the social digital exclusion. First of all, due to the fact that um, the first organization, as far as I know, that uh, defines and treats uh, uh, social digital exclusion or digital exclusion as part and parcel of social inequalities is uh, OECD, the, the Organization for Economic uh, Cooperation and Development. Uh, they uh, so they perceive this uh, this exclusion uh, into you know they divide this exclusion into hard one and soft one. Hard one is as your organization has uh, recently published the reports. This is infrastructural one actually, and the soft one, which is based first of all of, uh, on competences and uh, and motivational aspects, and that's something we uh, we 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 especially were interested in. And we have created our own definition of social digital exclusion, which is the phenomenon of systemic limitations of the life chances of individuals and local communities in which a plethora of other layers, including economic, social, uh, psychological, and obviously infrastructural are intertwined and they impede all of them. Uh, they, they play together and they impede humans and communities development. So all in all, under no circumstances in our humble opinion, should we perceive those two realms uh, separately? Uh, according to the report, we see just a, just a few figures and numbers. Yes, we see that almost 20% of Poles don't use internet at all. Uh, during the pandemic, 25% of the poorest households uh, haven't been able to access the internet at home too. Although around even up to 65% of people, it depends on the social section, but even up to 60, 65% those who don't use the internet, they have still access to digital devices. That's intriguing. Uh, and uh, as you mentioned, the COVID, uh, the COVID uh, speaks a lot, speaks, speaks volumes about the divisions, uh, about the divides and the social digital uh, um, exclusion. So 90% of people who hadn't had access to the internet before the pandemic still claim that they have no needs of using it. Uh, concurrently, at the same time, uh, so the groups that had 
had uh, unlimited, uh, if you will, access to the internet and new technologies. Uh, uh, so I would like to say that they outrun even more. So the difference is 10 times bigger between those groups, the poorest ones and uh, the poorest and, 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 and the rich. And the COVID situation uh, that was supposed to have, to, to have been the leverage for the acquisition of new competences, but in fact, it created even bigger social, social divides since social and mental barriers. So uh, in, in, in my opinion, in the opinion of my colleagues, we should perceive this, this topic as a systemic one, not individually oriented uh, problem and the barrier. Uh, one, one point more I would like to share with you. There, there, there are some elements and some qualities of social Darwinists that are running in our society. And we've seen it uh, in this report, uh, namely 51% of us see the issue of digital exclusion or social digital exclusion, but we are purposefully or, or not purposefully, but we are indifferent to these problems, even though a uh, vast majority of the excluded or so-called excluded people are our, you know, nearest and dearest. That's also intriguing. And up to around, around 40% of us also um, put blame for the state of the matter on individuals of the excluded, uh, not on the system uh, for which we should take responsibility. That's, uh, that's the main conclusion and something I wanted to share with you at the beginning of this discussion. Thank you. Indeed, your, your diagnosis is very interesting, and I think we'll get back to it in a later part of the discussion. Uh, now I, I would like to turn to, uh, to Maria, who is my only compatriot here, here at the stage in, in Katowice. Um, if you could comment um, a bit, how do you see this uh, digital exclusion issue from the business perspective and also from the global perspective? We want to talk here about cooperation of different institutions to combat this digital divide. How can you comment on that from, you, from your side? Right. Yeah. And Conrad, thank you for uh, for that diagnosis. It is incredibly interesting uh, what you were saying, and I think it gives a good framework for also the characteristic or the very specific characteristics and multi multifaceted issue of the digital divide. Um, so when when looking at cross cultural cooperation to combat the digital divide, it's with kind of a deep understanding that no one sector and no one institution has the answers of how to approach this issue and how to solve this problem. And we really need to partner with all, all sectors to, uh, to address the several different facets of digital exclusion. So maybe starting from the perspective, you know, of sustainable development goals. Um, First of all, goal, goal four, which talks about quality education, which at the moment without digital inclusion is not possible. Um, goal eight, decent work and economic growth. Again, we know if you're digitally excluded, the, the, the chances for, for decent work and economic growth of your environment are, are low. Um, we're talking about goal 10, so just reducing inequality, again, is one of our obligations. But what I see kind of most important or is the goal that brings all of this together and brings all of us together in this panel, but in general, all of us as institutions is partnerships for the goals, which is goal 17. And here there are indicators by which you can measure whether this goal is being achieved. So when talking about us working towards combating or trying to make the digital divide smaller, we can look at indicators like systemic issues and capacity building. And here again, talking about what you said, Konrad, this is a systemic issue that we have to approach together. And so to directly answer your question, Ignace, um, how, do, how do we see this cross-sectoral cooperation? Well, first of all, um, it will not be possible without the thought leadership of researchers and non-governmental institutions. Um, without uh, the strong cooperation of governments for policy reasons, but also for a lot of funding reasons, and then without a very strong leg of the business community, which both has a lot of resources, uh, not only speaking about financial resources, but also resources like the possibility to, you know, connect or support in, in good connectivity in hardware, but also resources in terms of the most complex area fundamental to the digital divide, which is skills, 
And this is something, again, Conrad, which was so visible in your analysis, right? So that 65% of those that weren't using the internet actually have access to devices. So why aren't they using them? Or why do 90% still claim that they have no, no need of using the internet? And I think there's a lot about skills, which is very complex. And these skills are often in the private sector. So from, from the, or the knowledge about skills and the knowledge of how to spread these skills and also the understanding of what direction the economy is going in and our possibility to share these skills, but not only. Thank you. Uh, in drawing a line between our national problems and the, and the global issues that we are also interested in. Uh, I would like to now turn to, to Yolanta Jaworska, who is uh, for a number of, of years engaged in the uh, topic of digital skills and digital competences. Uh, if I could ask you, is this, uh, do you see the changes that, uh, that uh, the pandemic brought to this area of digital exclusion? Uh, and also, what's the perspective of uh, such an, of, of, your, of, of what's your perspective and what's the perspective of, of your global corporation? Uh, thank you very much uh, and thank you very much for this uh, discussion. The topic is absolutely extremely important for us uh, and for our company, but also for all or majority, majority of companies. I'm, I'm saying this because 88% um, of companies, for them, the skilled labor availability is the key business factor. And uh, the, uh, the topic we are discussing is absolutely um, related to this. And for us, um, obviously, the, the priority is more focused on closing the skills gap. And of course, we are doing a lot as business and also as other businesses internally, but we are talking about what can we do and how can we collaborate externally to make a real change. And for that, <clears throat> obviously, our priority is improving the, the quality of education. Uh, and um, and later on we will uh, uh, I will share the the exact uh, examples uh, for for what for preparing these young people but not only preparing the young people but also helping the the adults to reskill to adapt to the changing uh, uh, changing environment and um, obviously uh, our activities are also to uh, to help uh, teachers to help the education to improve the uh, um, the quality to uh, um, um, orchestrate the effective collaboration between the business uh, and academia by, by sharing our best practicing, by offering our, not only our knowledge, but also our technology. And, and for years, these are our, uh, these are our objectives. And uh, I'm so glad that we can um, implement this uh, best practices with other businesses uh, to such an extent also uh, in Poland. Thank you. Thank you. I, ju I just to, like to ask you, do you see any change that the pan pandemic brought here? Do you see more people willing to, to reskill, to uh, update their skills? Absolutely. Absolutely. And what I see, what we have noticed from the beginning of, uh, of last year, um, uh, I would say great opening from both from, from the side of our employees, but also from, uh, from the schools, from, uh, from students, from other people who are really willing to work together uh, to, to share um, our, um, um, our knowledge and uh, to help those uh, who need this help. So um, uh, we had a great examples of uh, working together with, uh, with other companies to very quickly teach a couple of thousand of students. We have do done this project with, uh, with Cisco to teach um, almost uh, 5,000 uh, teachers 
how to use um, how to use the uh, the remote uh, technology to to run the online um, online education and this wouldn't be possible because this whole project was done pro bono um, with the mm, uh, such a engagement from the employees from the companies uh, so this was uh, also a great example of our collaboration with the uh, NGOs and Maria uh, was uh, um, really um, uh, uh, the author uh, and, and Alec, um, uh, thank you very much for, for your uh, participation as well. Uh, so uh, definitely this has changed a lot because um, I think many people have noticed that this is not uh, something that we can or cannot have. We must uh, um, use this, uh, this technology because we, we don't know what the future can bring to us. Uh, so this is one thing. And another thing is that uh, really we have seen a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of, of openness and willingness from all different um, uh, people and institutions to work together and to he uh, help each other. Thank you. Uh, Alex, so it's finally uh, to you. You've been researching digital exclusion and dig digital divide for years and you've been engaged in a number of uh, initiatives in Poland. Uh, I would like to first ask you about um, a contrast that I hear in the, the in, in what the previous speakers have said. Conrad is painting a picture where uh, the division is getting stronger. I mean, it's accelerating. The people who were already online and using digital technologies, they use it more. While those who are digitally excluded, they they still don't use it. Uh, never mind the pandemic. And Yolanta is saying that, that that she sees a lot of engagement and willingness to uh, to skill up and to learn. How do you see this this state of uh, affairs in Poland currently? Can you add anything to this diagnosis? Um, I think paradoxically both diagnoses are correct. I think we are facing both issues at once. Uh, and that's the whole challenge, that we cannot have a, a, a strategy that just focuses, let's say, broadly speaking, on, on upskilling, because I think that's the case with uh, a lot of uh, adults, especially. They don't require uh, a, a deep divide to be bridged, but th there are other shapes of the divide uh, of being excluded that need to be dealt with. Um, but then we, we cannot just leave alone people who are really excluded. Uh, and there are some very specific groups that are obvious, like, for example, older people and seniors, but not only them. For instance, I think this is really uh, important. Uh, your research, Ignacy, where shows that geographically speaking, uh, this leads maybe not, you know, to a a scenario where internet is not available, but it's really a handicap how you can access it. Uh, and I would add um, uh, one more factor. And now, you know, Marina has been writing about it. We are also at a, at a stage where we sort of really need to reconceptualize the divide. Um, also in terms of how people are capable of, of functioning on the modern internet and understanding challenges it faces with issues like ethics and values. This is something we haven't been discussing, let's say, 10 years ago when shaping our strategies. Unfortunately, it's one more layer that makes this uh, whole uh, system a bit more complex. And I want to make very quickly one more point that's probably obvious to us, but I think should be signaled in the context of IGF that I treat the Polish case, one we understand very well, as not unique, rather as exemplary of challenges with digital inclusion and dig dealing with digital divide happening all around the world, not even just across Europe. Of course, we're in a probably a, a certain specific category of countries where I, which I would define somewhere in the mid range of challenges. Uh, but, but this is, I think, a very big um, group. I just wanted to mention this. Thank you. Some categories are exceptional, Alec. Yes, I would like to say that uh, in terms of education and the correlation between education and the functional and dysfunctional use of internet, uh, places are as the lowest, uh, you know, in the lowest ranks uh, in the European countries. That's that's the problem. So that the less we are educated, the the the, the worse is the you know the usage and the happy dual you know behaviors of using the internet. This is exceptional, pejoratively, unfortunately. 
Thank you. I, I just would like to add to uh, that from our report that I mentioned before that Alec referred to, uh, what we propose is to measure real internet speeds, not the declared internet speeds, not, not only the quality of the network, but the actual speed that, that the final user has in his or her home. Because this is something that, that really brings the divide indoors, right? If you have a 30 megabit cable connection, but uh, when you use it on your home Wi-Fi, it's only five or six megabit, then it's obviously too little to to have uh, uh, online education or, or home office. So, so, so this is something which is not, not often measured. It's often not included in, in, strategies, in, in strategies, either European or, or national, but this is something we should look at if we really want to, uh, to combat the digital uh, divide. Um, Alec, just uh, coming back uh, to you, if you could start the round, uh, uh, the looking into the future from, um, what should be the, the next steps if we want to cooperate and effectively uh, combat this growing di digital divide in Poland and in internationally? Um, I think one, one thing I wanted to highlight is, is there are probably a, a lot of things to be done with, but I think there's a way to deal with this complexity because indeed it can be daunting to suddenly see a digital inclusion agenda as including everything from infrastructural work uh, to really big challenges with uh, with skills and i agree by the way conrad it, it is in ways challenging to see ourselves always on the on the data viz diagrams to be in that that lower part I'm, I'm hoping and still optimistic that we can uh at least in my lifetime shift a bit but it's hard work let's face it and and I'm really fond of the concept of, of missions, which is now being promoted um, initially by Professor Mariana Matsukato uh, from UCL, but now adopted by the European Commission. There are some interesting uh, pilot missions. Uh, I think uh, some Polish representatives are involved in the one around smart cities. But missions are, are these ideas that you have to take a really daunting challenge. The archetypical example is uh, flight to the moon, but also one to which a lot of people can contribute in different ways. And I think this is exactly what's, what's the case with uh, digital inclusion. There's a role to play, for instance, for uh, infrastructure providers, be it telecom operators, cloud solutions operators, right? Uh, they really need to make the technology accessible. There's a huge educational work to be done. Uh, and then there are these new challenges, for instance, I would broadly frame them around ethics of internet use, which require different actors to um, to take, take uh, responsibility for that. And the whole trick is that we should be uh, coordinating it, but without putting in some very uh, big formalized central structure. And I think this concept of the mission allows us uh, to do exactly that. So I assume that, that you see a government role in, in um, naming those missions and, and saying what's, what's, the, what's the, exactly the mission and then other actors joining this call, right? Yes, this is and this is sort of the how we went to the moon, basically, right? The the government sort of says, let's go and points in the right direction, defines the mission that immediately says we will not do it alone. Uh, we need uh, uh, to procure right solutions on the market, but we also need to activate the energy of basically the citizens. The, a good mission is one where a, a single person hearing that there's a problem with digital inclusion will find some way to deal with it. There's basically a very basic solution to that problem, which I understand is huge, that there are people with access to the internet not using it. There's someone missing in their vicinity, uh, either someone in the family or a neighbor who should pick up this modern form of volunteering and basically say, you know, I will help you. Thank you. Uh, Yolanta, how do you see your role in the, in the um, vision that Alec has presented, the vision of, of publicly defined missions where I assume you could join as, uh, as IBM. What con concrete uh, actions or steps do you see as relevant for your organization? Well, thank you very much. This is absolutely uh, crucial what, what Alex said, uh, the collaboration between business, between academia and uh, obviously governments. And without this collaboration, we, uh, we uh, are not uh, 
uh, able uh, alone uh, as business uh, to to uh, improve the situation and what we have done um, in Poland and actually uh, worldwide uh, as IBM starting as IBM but now with a lot of uh, uh, more than 600 partner companies, uh, we have um, uh, very concretely started the Pathways to Technology project, uh, which is um, addressing um, the skills gap uh, for the um, young students at the high schools. We, uh, and Krakow, uh, Katowice, sorry, is the, the best example because we have started the Polish uh, project right in Katowice with two schools, uh, with um, uh, Fujitsu, uh, Samsung, uh, now uh, many more um, uh, Polish and um, foreigner <clears throat> companies with the schools where we declared that as a business we will take care not for one month, not for half a year, but we will um, set up a pro we are setting up the program and our volunteers who every month for at least five years are working with the classes and um, uh, obviously we are um, able now only to uh, work with six maybe seven maybe ten schools which is nothing and we do realize this so because of that and because of huge interest worldwide uh, for improving the digital skills <clears throat> IBM decided to start the program and open the platform free of charge for anyone who would like to upgrade the skills uh, with the uh, mini badges um, in different areas like um, um, uh, cloud, blockchain, cybersecurity, data uh, analysis, um, uh, new technologies, quantum, and we are um, open to collaborate with all the companies and who are willing to um, to move forward. I think that we have in Poland, and not only in Poland, huge number of different um, initiatives, but we are not working together. We are working in silos. And this is, in my opinion, the biggest challenge that we have to overcome together with uh, academia, with um, with business, and obviously with central and local governments. Thank you. Yeah, I'm building exactly on what you were you were saying, right? So um, this 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 working in in silos, we need a common strategy for impact, because if we want to have impact, then together we need to. And we are quite often right, but really sitting down, look at the data that's been collected and start looking at what underlies the problem and what can we do together to solve these problems. And that's why when I'm talking about resources that we all, what are we bringing to the table, each of us as academia, as think tanks, as thought leaders, as the public sector and as business, what can we bring to the table in order to address these very specific issues and problems that have been named by the way of doing research and looking into it. And for example, these, you know, the, the P-TECH schools that you're talking about or this platform, that's a very specific resource that's being brought to the table. But without cooperation and aligning this towards goals that will be named together, the impact will be much smaller. A lot of work is being done by Orange Foundation. And here, I think in synergy, we can really go miles further, especially in synergy also with with, with the governments. Um, what I also want to add, again, talking about what you said, Konrad, that we put the blame on individuals, not on the system. It's a systemic issue, yet we blame individuals for not being digitally included or maybe not making the effort. I think a huge question we have to ask ourselves is how can we make the digital economy or the information society that we live in more inclusive? How can we lever the, lower these barriers of access? Because the risk of a digital transformation that huge percentages of the population will not participate in is enormous and if we don't do this well we're going to have a very very big problem soon
Thank you for this for this comment. We unfortunately we we missed the representative of the government in this panel today, but uh, we hope to. Yes, due to illness. So this is a pity. But Conrad, having uh, after those comments, if you could say what are your recommendations as to concrete steps that could and should be taken and how to cooperate. And also, if you, um, as, as Maria mentioned, you, you run large projects such as um, uh, related to, to schools. Can you say, is it, uh, do you already see that there is cooperation between your foundation, your, uh, the, 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 the business that, that it's attached to and the, and the government? Oh, definitely. We do our utmost to collaborate as smoothly as possible with organizations from non-governmental organizations, local authorities, they are crucial here and they, they, they should be mentioned too, and also the government and the public institutions. And so ha having, uh, having heard what Alec has already said, and, and Marina, so this is, it is visible. Maybe it sounds like a, like a platitude, but I would like to say that this is not only, you know, not this is not only crucial what, uh, what is ahead of us, but also the way how we would like to achieve it. And uh, this, is, this is also equally, equally crucial, especially from the perspective of the organizations like, my, like mine, the organization I, I represent. And so answering this question directly, we have uh, prepared this report not for itself. Uh, we have also created, based on this report, the local deprivation index in order to, uh, to, to achieve our goals better and to get to know the local, local needs better, because sometimes we, we see, even speaking from my personal experience, that uh, uh, we assume how the reality looks or what the reality, reality looks like, but actually this is very a far cry from, from the real you know, needs that people have uh, in local uh, communes. And, uh, and also, sorry for, I would like to, I would like to be uh, slightly uh, philosophical, but we wanted to avoid the, the effect which is called by sociologists, Alec is a sociologist, he, he knows it very well probably, the St. Matthew's effect. Uh, which is which is about you know providing relatively affluent social sections with aids, charity initiatives, and educational programs uh, on different levels, uh, and concurrently contributing to exasperation of inequalities, so that uh, that the groups that are underprivileged are not supported by us efficiently, and we uh, we we need to tell the truth that sometimes we are not efficient enough, uh, even though we have assets and capacity to do that. And according to the report and to the index I mentioned, the local deprivation index, uh, we know today that even up to 22% of uh, Polish communes are in peril of the social digital exclusion at the highest level, 22%, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's huge. Uh, and we implemented it in our, you know, we put it into practice uh, in our programs, especially in the recruitment process to our programs, uh, just to inform you that our foundation has been involved in a schooling system for 15 years. We support schools all over Poland uh, and we provide them with uh, media literacy, digital uh, digital education and to, some, and to an extent also civic education. Uh, so we have uh, created a special uh, call centers that proactively uh, contacted each and every school from the communes uh, that were in peril of, uh, of the exclusion. Uh, we intensified communication that you know they meticulously explained to them the benefits of participation of participating participating in our programs uh, we intensified communication to those schools through letters and papers that included you know different information to those territories then to the others so that they were full of information concerning local issues and also we use geotargeting on social media and, and portals on top of that we also thanks to this report and this uh, this index it has changed our philosophy of uh, of, of and the mission of the foundation to, to an extent that uh, we have changed our the methodology of the selection of the applications. Uh, the selection of the applications is assessed by the detached objective uh, committee, but two points out of tw 20 were granted for the mere fact of living in, this, in those territories. And thanks to this, we today we feel that we are closer to their needs, actually. Yes, 80% of our participants come from uh, from small towns and rural areas up to 40,000 inhabitants. Uh, more than 20% of schools that are uh, in our programs come di directly from the territories that are at risk of the highest level of exclusion and so on and so forth. That's, that's exactly the first step we have taken and we would like to continue. And this is a sort of commitment to the local societies that we would like to continue in the future. Uh, and also maybe at the end, sorry for, for this, but I would like to also say that uh, thanks to this, uh, this report and this kind of actions we have taken, 
we have also we, we have just started for example collaborating with uh, collaborating with youth community centers that are cut out for serving underprivileged groups by nature like broken families for example and you know thanks to those centers they kids might uh, catch up on curriculum and this is also the place we had uh, we hadn't had any experience with, with with those centers and now it's it's about time we, we we started you know collaborating with them in order also to get to know better their needs so i would like to say that you know taking first step is something that open opens up to new to new realities yes and uh, the realities that are multifaceted as marina and and you ignace uh, said at the beginning of this discussion Thank you very much. And Maria's last voice in the discussion, if you could say what comes out of the discussion for you and for the missions that we hope to be uh, to be executed and implemented in Poland. Um, yeah, I would say the, so the, the, the mission that we here feel together is um, partnerships for impact to really have a measurable effect on combating the digital divide. So to really you know, be able to say, this is what we're planning to do. These are the problems we see. Um, both Orange Foundation and Polish Economic Institute have really done in-depth research that shows us the, the, the situation where we can define goals, which we can measure and really show how, this part, how these partnerships towards a strategy commonly defined and everybody bringing to the table what they could gives us a measurable impact and not only talk. And I hear about quite incredible work done and we see incredible work done and hope more and more will join this train. Yes, and if I may I add something, I am so sorry for, for, for being too talkative maybe, but it's not only a matter of just, uh, you know, IT category of governmental, you know, uh, structure of uh, of the public institutions, but it's first of all, and what Alec went, what you, uh, Marina has said that it's a matter, first of all, of social solidarity, actually. And that that's why we should take responsibility for, for this state of the matter, you know, all our organizations and all sectors. Okay, our, our time is up. So, so I'd like to thank you very much for this uh, for this discussion and thank everyone who has been listening to us. Uh, I hope we can meet again in some time to see those silos broken down and our cooperation and realizing those uh, missions which are not flying to the moon but making everyone, taking everyone on board in our society. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for moderating us. <laughs> thank you very much and let's work together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for, for a fantastic moderation and you know have a terrific day. Thanks. See you soon.